And we're going to start things off today by taking a look at the cattle markets with Mike Briggs. And a big thanks to Mike for taking the time to talk with us this week. Like many of us, he had to shovel out from the snow, but he also still has a feed yard of cattle to take care of. So pulling double duty there. Lots to talk to him about this week. He joined me by phone and I began by getting an idea of what his day to day looks like since the grain rally and the winter weather is adding even more volatility to the cattle markets. This is the snowiest January on record. Well, in the feed dirt industry, we never need that. It really has played havoc with my pen conditions and played havoc with cattle performance and cattle health, and it's not very much fun. So that's added quite a few challenges that we didn't need because everything's harder to do in the winter anyway. And that's been a little difficult and a little disappointing. I've heard you say before how having a large supply of beef and a large supply of cattle are different things. And we've seen it before with winters like this. That's going to take a lot of pounds off these animals. Eventually it will. It hasn't as of yet. And that's because, the, in, my, in my view, the packer's got his foot on the brake as far as how many cattle he can process and what he can get done. And I think he's doing, he's trying to do margin maintenance. He's trying to make this huge margin. They're making in the area of $300 a head right now. And they're trying to drag that out as long as they can because I think we have 45 to maybe on the outside 60 days worth of pretty good supplies of fat cattle. And then it's going to get real thin real fast. And they know it. They see these feed yards every week and they're aware of that. That's what I kind of believe is going on. But we it, eventually this will... It will help fix the problem of pounds because there won't be so many extra pounds of beef. But then it's going to make a situation worse than that. There's not going to be enough pounds of beef because there aren't enough cattle, I believe. If corn price stays high, these weights will, not only because of the weather, but because of corn price. If corn price stays high, these weights are going to drop. You're not going to see 15, 16, 17 hundred pound cattle anymore. And that's really going to drop the beef supply because you're putting on less pounds for every animal you send to the plant. So obviously margins are bad right now. Give us an idea of just how bad. Well, the margins are negative at this point in time. Now we're getting, we haven't sold cattle at more than $1.12 for nine months now. And you cannot make money on cattle that are priced under $1.12. It's just almost impossible. The only way you make money there is you beat the rancher down on his price down to 85 cents, which there's no such thing as 85 cents feeder cattle anymore. So um, it's been very tough in the feeding industry. Some of that's of our own doing because we still allow the packer too much of a captive supply as percentage of cattle sold. We really need to knock that off one of these days. But until we can gain some leverage on the packer, he's going to have a big margin. And we're not. That's the simple of it right there. All right. Cattle on feed report was last Friday. Any surprises in that report? Well, there was. And, and, and our supplies, we, we actually overplaced what the guesses were, and that kind of surprised me a little bit. But having said that, the market showed you a little bit of profitability there in December if you went and bought some cattle, and that was before court really got out of hand. I mean, it's kind of steadily gotten out of hand, but it really got out of hand the first last part of December, first part of January. But anyway, the market showed you a little bit of profitability. So if you own your corn, you want to hedge your cattle, or however you want to do that, you show a little paper margin so people placed a lot of cattle i did too and mike when we air this the cattle inventory report will have just been released any guesses as to what we might see well i think it's going to be interesting to see if your cow herd got a little smaller because we have a growing drought in the western part of the country and so the first thing people do they take the old cows and they take them to town and i think you're going to see some of that and if this drought in the west persists you're going to see more of it Maybe we'll see some adjustments in the calf crop number as it going down, like we're talking about. So that might be interesting to see. Uh, we all know our total beef supply is up, and thank God we've got great demand. We've got great export demand. We've got great domestic demand. And this was through a pandemic. You would have never guessed this in a million years. And it's almost hard for me to conceptualize. And thank you, the American consumer and all the export people, because... In my mind, when I roll into the store and chicken and pork are almost free and they're paying for beef, they're paying they're paying the premium for the beef because they're getting the quality they deserve and the quality they feel is just for what they're paying. And that's fantastic. 
Now, if we could get a little, little margin from the retailer and the packer down to this side, that would, we could all be happy. We'll have analysts on the show sometimes that'll have these tried and true marketing strategies that they'll follow for certain times of the year. So my question is, do you have any of those strategies? And if so, is the market that we're seeing right now causing you to rethink any of those strategies? That's a really good question. Now, typically, I always try to have animals for April, May, June, because that's grilling season. That's Memorial Day. It's right before right when they're starting to gather meat for 4th of July, Father's Day, all that stuff. If you don't have cattle ready in that time frame, I think, in my mind, you're making a mistake. There's there's times in the year to stay away from. One of those times is right now, and I'm right in the middle of it with a bunch of cattle to sell. Well, why did I do that? Well, because there was margin to be had then, and it looked pretty good, and then we got a faulty corn report, and then they, oh, we made a mistake, and all of a sudden corn takes off, and if you weren't really paying attention, and I wasn't, you kind of get caught looking a little stupid here, but January and February are two poorest beef demand months of the year. It's not really a good time to have cattle to sell, and then after Labor Day in September, and maybe the first part of October, the market is almost always awful. It just... After Labor Day, our beef demand just falls off the table. So I try pretty hard to stay away from those. I try to have all of my spring cattle out of here by no later than the 20th of June. This year, you, got, you might be able to extend that out a little bit because I think we'll have tremendous beef demand right into the 4th of July. That's kind of my two deals. I, I, I like November, December for cattle marketing. I like April, May, June. do not like Jan, Feb. I don't like... September, October, and those are determined by what beef demand typically is. 